Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm very honored and very, very happy to be here it, and to share the stage with people I respect and I admire. And I thank very much what design can do for having me here. Uh, I had a, a, a sort of hard time uh, preparing for this, for this short talk, uh, specifically because knowing I was coming right to the middle of Europe, you know, to the center of Europe in such dire times, and to come and talk about design and try to understand, you know, what are we doing as designers and what are the really, as we have been discussing during these two days, what are the really big problems of the world? So I started by looking at the mission or the, or the vision of this wonderful organization, what design can do, and uh, basically, I get three words, you know, a better world. How can we contribute as architects and designers to create a better world? And is this the better world that we're doing? This, is this what we're, you know, every day that's when I go back at night at home, this is what I turn on the TV and that's what I see. You know, we're creating a tremendous, dire uh, uh, accumulation of destruction. And we're here, you know, sitting in this wonderful city, but we cannot be sitting in bubbles. You know, we're completely separated somehow and away from what's really happening in the world. And we need to turn around and look around and really try to understand what are the problems of the world. Scandinavia, with all due respect, is not the whole world. Uh, we live in a world of what, what I call interconnected cities. I wish and I hope that very soon this world will be a, a, a borderless world, a completely unified world where all can share this amazing, amazing planet. Uh, it's a world that is already incredibly interconnected, but it's also a world that is uh, in, in, uh, in, in constant change. Everything is moving around. It's a world of, as I would like to see it, of free exchange. Goods, resources, information, knowledge, everything is moving freely. It's a world in continuous transformation. It's a world tremendously dynamic. Nevertheless, there are certain issues that have been affecting our world that are a little bit after our control. And I have been able to sort of uh, frame it in three different categories. Uh, obviously, uh, we, have, we know about the natural disasters. Uh, the, the first speaker uh, already spoke about, about waters racing. Uh, but we have been uh, watching around the world, uh, everywhere, every day, something tremendously happen. And is it earthquakes, fires, drought, flooding, everything that make the world change and make people have to move around. People are leaving uh, every place because of natural disasters. Uh, and these are uh, what we see here are only the alerts that we have for the next few months. We're expecting tremendous things happening all around basically the world. Climate change, obviously, it's a big, a big issue and obviously is one of the, of the topics that organizations like this have to commit and have to uh, dedicate and, and groups like ours have to be aware of because it's one of the creators of what's happening and what's making our world change in such a, such a destructive way. Only a couple years ago, we saw one of the most uh, amazing and incredible sanitary disasters in the world. And that had already, already changed tremendously uh, the way we look at the world, the way we move around, the way we live. Uh, the, uh, obviously, from the previous talk, the way we talk. This is a very good slide, as a matter of fact, for, for Mr. Hendrix's talk, I think. <laughs> Uh, but it has changed tremendously the world. And obviously, a separate camps or concentration camps has not been the solution. And probably the worst part of it is what I call man-made disasters. And we are living uh, and just watching around us the incredible collective stupidity that, that we are all being part of and that we somehow cannot control. 
You know, and this is what what we're looking out, and this is my big question, and it's not only Ukraine, it's Afghanistan, it's Syria, it's Myanmar, it's Darfur, it's all, you know, a, a big part of, Afri of Africa, it's Central America. You know, we're, lo we're looking at tremendous destruction, destruction of life, of lives, destruction of patrimony, of cultural patrimony, destruction of social tissue, a, a destruction of our collective memory. And how are we, how can we as designers be part of that? What all of this destruction is also creating is tremendous, important, very important waves and currents of migration, migration and displacement. This migration and displacement, this movement of people is only growing, is not slowing down. And the tendencies are to grow more and more, and that will change more, uh, in, uh, more drastically uh, our world. And the displacements are, are obviously uh, produced both, both by natural conditions, but also by human conflicts all around the world, and very specifically in certain places. As we speak, right now, right now, in this precise moment, there are more than seven and a half million people moving around the world, changing their place uh, uh, where they're going to end up living. It's a very important thing. Uh, we see uh, scenes like this everywhere. These are just uh, uh, slides that we see everywhere, you know, in every paper, in every media condition. And this is exactly what's happening in the world. Seven million people is one-fourth of the population of Holland. Uh, we, we are very familiar with that. And that what's very interesting also is that not all the people are moving out of the places of conflict. Many people are also moving back to the places where the conflict has started. And all of that, I would say, brings tremendous opportunities uh, to the world of design and the world of architecture. I should also say that actually now more than 300 million people it, that, that's enormous, enormous amount of people. It's 10 times the population of Holland doesn't live in their place of origin anymore. And that it's only to grow. And what has this created? Because we live in an urban world. We, need, we live in a world that every day it, our cities are becoming more important and more populated and more populated. So it's creating a tremendous phenomena called urbanization. And urbanization has created beautiful places. These are two amazing cities, and those are two great examples of good urbanization. It's Mexico City and it's New York City. Uh, this is obviously New York, which you, many of you know, but it has also created enormous problems. Uh, th th these are not the solutions for urbanization and for the future of our cities. Uh, uh, th this is a, a very striking thing because it's, this is even Paris. This is around the corner from here. Uh, that's what uh, migration and displacement is being created. And this is one solution here in the Netherlands, which is basically a camp, you know, that it's located, I don't know where, I don't know if it's the east, I don't know if it's the west, but I know it's not in here in Amsterdam. <laughs> so these are not the solutions that we as designer are looking for. This is a very interesting map that I found about the creation of, of New York, and it's about uh, uh, defining, New York was defined by neighborhoods, by mega blocks, where everyone, every mega block was sort of allocated to a different demographic condition. So if you were from a certain part of the world, or if you looked like somebody from a certain place, you had to live in a certain district of the city. And that has obviously created a sort of tapestry which is completely disintegrated. I use New York as an example, uh, because obviously we all know it's called the melting pot, but it's not unique to New York. This happens everywhere. We live in tremendously uh, this is London, disintegrated and disgregated cities where it, we don't end up creating the proper social, social tissue that would allow us to create 
equal conditions. Uh, I, I make this parallel. This is like the wealth and the beauty, the different colors, the different textures uh, that we, we gather in a city. But our cities just lo look just like that, completely separated, completely disintegrated. And my question always is, how can we create with that this kind of a pattern for our cities? How can we weave together a new texture of a city, a new tissue of a city that will be more just and will be more safe? We have in front of us, and very briefly, a tremendous opportunity of reconstruction. And I think many of the cities that, that have gone through tremendous uh, uh, suffering will have to, go, have to go through this process, and we need to, to get on them. We need to be active on them, and we need to, to dream of the city of the future, the opportunity of the new cities. What will be our new conditions of living? Uh, what will be a sustainable and resilient social fabric for the future? You know, and here we come again probably to take one of the big themes of, of this conference, which is the circular economy or the circular urbanism, I would call it, on how to create places that would eventually obviously not go to wait, not go to waste, but also be built in a very sustainable condition. In, in basically, there's two things. What we see in the photographs of destructions is not waste. It's opportunities for new construction. It's opportunities for new materials. And obviously, we need to definitely start working with the renewable energy and recycled, uh, uh, recycled water. And we have to create a city that it's cities, I mean, around the world, that are better places for our communities, that are better places for the people, and that would allow us to be more resilient to future possibilities of destructions that no doubt are going to happen. You know, I'm always surprised uh, how many times in my life I heard after World War, I, uh, World War II, it will never happen again, it'll never happen again, and it happens again and again and again. This is obviously the reconstruction of, of Warsaw. That is not the best of examples of now. And this is a very beautiful slide that I like, which is the part of the reconstruction of the great Tenochtitlan, which was the, the city of, on, of, on which my own city was built on. As you know, when the Europeans came to America, they totally destroyed the pagan cities, and then they eventually reutilized all the materials in order to build the new European cities. The European medieval cities is not the solution to us. And now what we have to all work together is to understand what is the solution for these mega cities that we're now starting to work together. Uh, and we, in, in, uh, I obviously want to leave you because I think there's great hope and I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to make a stop for a moment and think what are the cities uh, that, what will be the cities that are more inclusive, more diverse, more egalitarian, and coming back to, to the mission of, of this conference, uh, I would say, what are the cities that will create a world that is sustainable, inclusive, just, and safe for everybody? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that, Enrique. Um, My pleasure. Are there any concrete examples of projects back home, anywhere else in the world, that are getting it right? Well, uh, I don't know if we're getting it right. You know, the next, my next slides are about projects we're doing for cities. Mm -hmm. But in 15 minutes, it's impossible to okay. show that. <laughs> so we're hoping to be able to contribute. Mm -hmm. You know, in that sense, we're all, uh, fortunately having tremendous opportunities mm -hmm. to work in the re recreation of cities that are being fed in by new immigrations, by new wave, uh, waves of people yeah. that are bringing wealth and richness and other colors to our own ways of living. And we're I looking at ways to integrating all of that and creating a future for all of us. 
Is there, I'm going to push you though, for, for one like concrete example of, of a particularly innovative way of doing that or something that, that struck you as like, oh wow, I hadn't thought of that, or is there one example that you could highlight? Well, it's very, it's very difficult because, you know, obviously every case is, is completely distinct yeah. from any other case, you know, but we're working in, in, uh, in my country, in Mexico, yeah. in, in the city of Merida, creating a, a tremendous project that would integrate immigrants uh, into And how the are you doing that, for instance? Let's focus just on that, to integrate Im immigrants. Well, I need another 15 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, there's <laughs> no least. particular element. Okay. Well, how about you invite me again, <laughs> and I'll show you those projects. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, uh, some it's of the not a simple qu uh, answer. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's very complex. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, you said you're hopeful, which, uh, which is very good, because you know, the theme is a uh, call for optimism. Um, but achieving some of the changes you described there will really require, I don't know, like rethinking entire concepts of what, what does home mean, what does shelter mean. Um, how do we um, make sure that, that, that kind of those changes really happen? Well, I would say, to try to say it very simply, what we need to redesign is the social tissue of our communities. And we need to look at that fabric in a different way. And by understanding that, we, that our fabric, our essence is different, we will be, we will be able to understand that the, solution, the, the physical solution of our cities and our neighborhoods have to be of a different manner. Yeah. And that's where we need to start, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and let's, it makes me think of, uh, I, I had a trip to Luanda once in, in Angola, and yeah, that, that difference was then translated in, in a kind of an unhelpful way, because in some areas of the city, there's like lots of roundabouts, and the curbs are a certain height. In other en our areas of the city, there was a different contractor, a different architect, so there's like lots of crossroads, no roundabouts. And, and so I guess, yeah, how do you embrace that? Uh, acknowledgement of the difference, but make it cohesive. How do you do w that? Well, it's uh, obviously your questions are very. Uh, they require complex. an hour of a lecture. Okay, yeah, I exactly. See. But okay. I do appreciate them, and hopefully, uh, Richard will invite me again. I'll sh and I'll show a project okay. very calmly and go step by step. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, next year again. Agreed. Thank next you. year. Thank you very much, uh, Enrique Norton. You.